One second. I am resuming recording. Okay. Making sure. Am I recording? Who can tell if I'm recording? So this, you, you are recording. I am recording right now. Okay, good. Because I wasn't recording, so I'm glad that is. So I love this session. This is session number 10, week number 10. You know, we only have 12 weeks. So this is week number 10. And I saved sort of this because we built on up until this point till now. So this one, we're going to be talking about content creators, influencers, monetizing your influence as a content creator. Okay. And obviously, Brittany can't go over the entire book. She wrote an entire book on the subject, but she's going to give us the highlights and answer your questions one-on-one, -on -one, okay? So, you know, in the group. But first, I want to hear from everyone overall. Kimberly, and this is the thing I want all of you all to do. If we want to talk about being an influencer, please, from time to time, Google your name. So when I Google Brittany Hennessy today, I have pages and pages, and videos, and photos, and like a lot of information, right? So with you guys, I want you all to Google your name and see what comes up. So for Magdalena, we have a blog that was there. And then when I go to it, Magdalena's Motivations, I thought, oh, what a cute little name. I go there, blog's been dismissed or blog gone, okay? Yeah. Um, always read, that was a ClickFunnels page good but say for instance you decide you want to do click funnels no more it's not yours you don't really own it kimberly i kept going to find kimberly richardson obviously kimberly is a pretty common name like pam right kim and pam those are common names but 50 plus shades of us because we don't know whether we're putting in the five zero a f a plus p l u s or the plus sign i mean so and not a lot came up. So look and see what comes up about your name. Cynthia, what came up for her, she doesn't have a website yet. What came up was that she was in Speakers Magazine. So that's what I saw for her because that was like her one sheet. So from time to time, Google your name. And if you're not showing up, that's going to be a problem. So what's the first thing that probably should show up is what you own, which is your website. Okay, and that's a whole nother discussion, Brittany. We won't get into about what's the right website, what's a whack website. But that's one of the things you want to make sure that it has SEO, that your website converts, that people know what exactly they you do when they land on it. Like they know what you do because you want they you only get a nano of a second to decide whether you're going to read the rest of this copy on this website. So they need to know exactly what you do immediately. That's why I have up there, Magdalena, always read, remain enlightened in defeat deception, because it's so cute and clever. You only have a nanosecond to really kind of get what it is that you want people to know. And so you got the two L's in the always and then the Z. But in the logo, it's like, is it a Z or is it a three? So, you know, you want to really be as clear as possible. I really do like this picture of you, Kimberly, because it has in the background um, women over 50. And that's exactly what your website does. So that's kind of like the main thing. And um, I heard, I don't know if Dr. Geneva's on, but she recently did a commercial shoot. She's She is a person that... Um, one Miss Black Fit and Fine for women over the age of 50. And so she signed up, not an influencer per se, but like a commercial, kind of like what you do, Brittany. Like, remember you were doing casting. So she was, she went out for like, quote unquote, a cattle call for a commercial for seniors. And uh, that's the, I think it was her second one that she did. So anyway, so that was kind of like cool. So what I want now is the people that I had on this sheet, this one here, Kimberly, I don't know if Magdalena, Magdalena's here. Um, yeah, and if Cynthia's here, to drop your elevator pitch, to basically let um, Brittany know who you are and what you do. You're going up the elevator, you got 30 seconds or a minute, kind of let her know what you do, what you're about. Who's first? Kimberly. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, Brittany. Welcome. Hi, Kimberly. I'm Kimberly Richardson, the founder of 50 plus shades of us .com, which is an online platform to inspire the 50 plus 
generation to show how age doesn't in seasons. And I highlight those seasons of purpose, perseverance, and praise. Allow me to shine a light on your shades. So what do you think, Brittany? So I think you have a lot in there. And I think you take too long to get to your three Ps, which that's what people are going to remember. And so you want to come and say your name, the site, and our mission is to blah, 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 blah. Because lots of times people have already stopped listening after that. No attention span. <laughs> and your, your really good stuff was at the end. And so you want to move your three piece because people are listening. Like what, what is the mantra? That's why I have like manage and monetize your influence. And like, you know, like that rolling thing, you want to move that way to the front because that was the good stuff. I was like, Oh, okay. I like that with the three P's. And so move that to the front. And then you want to do it. Like, what do they say? Like the, uh, like in journalism, like the, like the upside down pyramid, as it gets to the end, it's less and less important. So like the last line, like shine a light on your seasons, those things are great because you built it into your brand. But if I miss that, it's okay. You don't want miss me to miss your three Ps because that was, that's your whole thing. That's your, your thing. So you need to have that like, even on your website, big in your Instagram bio, top, like if not the first line, the second line, but that's really what people are going to remember. And you want that to be close to your name because if somebody tries to copy you, People will go, no, no, that's that's Kimberly. That's not yours. But if it's so separated from you, somebody could easily take it and run and spend a lot of money promoting that. And mm. you won't own that anymore. Somebody else will. Mm. That's good. That is okay. good. We did. No, Every I, time she would do her elevator speech, we would always say that those P's were good, but they were always come at the end. Yeah, you want to bring it right to the front. Okay, so, because I, I thought it was more important to, 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 uh, just give a description of what shades is and so i that's why you know but i understand what you're saying to uh, grab it first yeah. yeah and even in your because once you say in the very beginning when you say the name the 50 plus already if it applies to me i'm per, i'm leaning in a little bit i'm like oh that's that's me so now right there the next thing is well what's your motto okay because and then and then I'm like, oh, okay, I like, I like those words. Those words make me feel a certain way. Because it's your name, great, who are you? Then you've got the name of your site, which is great, because now I know that if I'm in your target demo or not. And now what you're going for is what's the feeling? Because if you would have said like sassy, sexy, and saucy, I would have been like, oh, something else, okay. So you're, the next thing is I need to get the brand tone. Is it fun? Is it serious? Is it light? Is it like quirky? Like what's happening? So that you want to get that feeling right away. Okay. And then you can tell me because people don't buy, people don't, people don't buy actual products or services. They buy feelings. They want to feel a certain way. You know, that's why if you look at some of these brands that have like bad clothing or like no offense if anybody likes it, but like, I hate Dunkin' Donuts coffee. And I'm just like, what you, you're a coffee place that can't make coffee. I don't get it. But you know, it's like America runs on Dunkin'. So people who love Dunkin' Donuts are like, yeah, I'm running, I'm hustling, I'm moving. It's not about the coffee. It's about aligning themselves with this brand message. And even Nike, people who have never exercised a day in their life are like, oh, I put on my Nike and I'm an athlete. And it's like, mm, no, <laughs> you know, not quite, but it's the feeling. So you mm. want to give them your name, the name of the site, let them know if they're in the target demo, and then you need the feeling. I need to feel something. Then it really, if I'm feeling good about what you're saying, it doesn't matter what else you say. I'm like, take my money. I love you. This is great. Uh -huh. And you know, so all those other pieces just support the original, your name, company name, feeling and purpose. And how am I going to feel if I buy your service or your product? Uh -huh. Okay. Thank there you. was something you talked about feelings too, Brittany. It talked about the influence of a good teacher can never be erased. So we have Kim, uh, Sandra on the line and she is, she works with those that are um, differently disabled, differently abled or mm -hmm. people with disabilities. She calls it differently abled. And right. so for her, it's not so much, uh, 
her the the brand that she wants to come across to people is trust because parents are mm -hmm. coming to her because they want to um, her to work with her children. So mm -hmm. the type of things that she posts is going to be different versus like Kimberly is kind of like cool and sexy or, you know, that kind of thing. So kind of give her a little bit of a hint because sometimes when we talk about Instagram and all, it's always what's so flashy and what's so fun and sexy or young, but mm -hmm. when you're dealing with the parenting, par parenting a child with disabilities or special needs, how would she, uh, I guess you would say, uh, be involved in this conversation as an influencer? Sure. So I think for a lot of things, you know, Instagram is very visual, but it has changed a little bit to where people are now trained to read a little more. And if you look at like on my profile, I'll have a photo and I've started using memes. Oh, memes are great. <laughs> I love a good meme. I saw the meme yesterday with Tyra. <laughs> yeah. And I get to put my memes up. But for me, it's less about the photo and more about the caption. And people are coming to my profile to read the caption. The picture is neither here or there. It, the picture is great, but lots of people will tell me, oh, when you said X, Y, and Z, and if I ask them what was the photo, they don't remember. So that's not what they're coming for. So I think for you, you know, you want to have nice, calming imagery. But if I'm trusting you with my child, I'm coming to hear what you have to say. Your picture, it could be nice pictures of a book, nice pictures of children, of a dog on a field. Like, you want to just evoke a certain mood with your photos, but I want to read because if I'm going to give you money or my child or a combination, I'm like, pictures are nice, but anybody can buy pictures. You know, you're not selling a look or a lifestyle where Kimberly, she has 50 shades of us and it's more, you know, it's talking about the seasons and like feeling a certain way. So there's a whole package there it's almost a lifestyle, even though if it's not specifically fashion or beauty, it's still a way of being, a way of acting, a way of feeling. So there is a little more emphasis on the visual. But for you, I'm coming to read, like, if you're talking about, you know, dealing with bullies, what did you have to say? If you're talking about advocating, you know, for your child in the classroom, what are your tips? Like, I want to know that you are the real deal and you know what you're talking about. Because the last thing I want is to start working with you only to find out that you were faking it and you actually aren't very good. And so for, for someone who it's more about the technical aspect, think of it as you're someone who's going to tell, like, it's almost like a trade. Like you think of yourself as like a plumber or an electrician. I am trusting you because this is what you do. You know how to do this. And I don't want to like, try to fix my own lighting because I'm getting electrocuted. <laughs> so it really is you giving me, this is why I'm the expert and why you should trust me with this task because I know about this subject, I know this, this, and this. About this subject, I know this, this, and this. And so really just, if, if you were to write a book, like giving them th those three tips to do this or a way to think about that, and that's what you're selling is your expertise. And that's how you get that conversion of people to read, know you know what you're talking about and trust you so don't worry so much about the pictures as long as they're not like crazy or like maybe go oh, like what's happening there it's just they have to be nice and calming mm -hmm. but for you it's more about the text than anything else okay and she's good at that so she's good because she knows basically she knows what she's talking about she's been doing it for <laughs> so long so that is and just even just calling uh her children that she works with differently able instead of disabled you know, where people would just Yeah, they're looking for those keywords because that's, you know, it's, oh, she knows that. Okay, that means you, you're in the community, you know the language, you understand those sorts of things. So even those little things, it's hints, you know, to the community that you're on the inside and you really want to lean into that. Cool, cool. This is a picture that I snatched from Publishers Weekly. So uh, I see the PW in the background there and it's not too <laughs> often that they bring authors into Publishers Weekly to talk. So that was pretty cool. I really, really liked that. That was cool. So, okay, we're going to move on. Um, today we're going to talk, we're talking about influencers, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is something that Brittany said in an article in Entrepreneur, and it's probably in the book too, but one of the things she says, there are lots of factors that go into becoming a successful influencer, but the top, she says, is authenticity. 
Can you connect with your audience through storytelling and will they engage with your content because it resonates with them, which is all of us on here. We all have an audience. We went through that through the avatar mm -hmm. and all of that. And then high quality photos and videos are very close second. And like what she was telling uh, Sandra, it's not first. The first part is the authenticity and then can you engage, but with a personal connection that, um, but without a personal connection, you won't get very far. So one of the things I have on this particular slide here is Dr. Geneva, I don't know if she's on or not, but she just recently turned 70. So she did a little post on seven things I've done at 70. And it was a lot, people were really, really, you know, um, resonating with this that were baby boomers, right? Because it was like, oh my goodness, you know, so she is starting a podcast or she is doing that. And so she just wrote a book. And so those are the things that give, asp give hope and aspiration to people who are also older okay over 50 over 60 and now hitting 70 and she's still hitting her stride so that's just one of the things that um talks about um and like i said she is um uh, went out for a commercial so maybe that's where she is right now she did a commercial uh, <laughs> <laughs> so her book like i said this particular book and Hi, I'm, hey the, oh you are there okay yeah, good. Thank you. yeah okay <laughs> i didn't see you. okay i didn't see you down there so one of the things that about this particular book, and I'm a bookaholic and I love, love books, but this particular book I saw before I even knew who you were, Brittany, I didn't even know, I didn't know anything about you, right? I just saw this book and I was like, wow, this is really cool. So it talked about building your personal brand in the age of social media. And what the book is, she tells you about what an influencer is from her perspective, but she also interviews, I believe, what, about 13 or 14 different influencers. Yeah, I think maybe there's eight profiles and then maybe about 10 or 15 other little quotes yes. from people throughout yeah. the book. So some of the profiles, like this particular one was Joy Chu, like Cho. Jimmy Chu? Cho? Oh, Joy Cho. Mm -hmm. Cho. Okay, Cho. So she basically, she quoted and says, we all have a, we all have a story and have a voice. We live in a day where we have platforms to share our voice with the world if we want to. So this particular one was one I really, really liked in the book. So it talked about if you find yourself talking about influencers who have built empires, Joy's name will definitely be mentioned. She said, as an early adopter to Pinterest, where she has over 12 million followers, she has multiple lines at Target and has authored three books. She built her brand from scratch, which is what you're going to talk about, and now has several employees, and everyone in the DIY space knows her name. Have you seen some of her work? Not even on the best day am I turning out sliders that look like that. So really, I like your style of writing because it's hilarious. It's like you have this biting uh, humor, you know, it's, it's, it's like tongue in cheek or whatever. Anyway, I just like it because it's, it's really <laughs> kind of funny. So that's how the book is. It gives you a little bit about the influencer and then it gives you a story behind that. And then she also gives you examples and samples of how to pitch, which is really, really the main thing. It has like how to pitch initially how to counteract i mean she has it all written down in the book so that's really really important so with that i've talked about the book now i'm gonna talk about the lady all right so <laughs> who is she she is obviously the best-selling author of influencer building your personal brand in the age of social media she's a co-founder and chief relationship officer of carbon a full service influencer marketing agency serving creators and brands so you all are creators okay brands would be like nike she was the first senior director influencer strategy and talent partnerships at hearst magazines this is where she secured and booked fashion and beauty influencers for cosmo harper's bazaar l esquire town and country 17 good housekeeping and all the other titles across the digital portfolio so that's what she did she actually was like the booking agent right she was also and that was the first time they had even had anybody like that she was also the first associate director not even saying like first black we're just saying first period not even first black because it's so many years oh she's the first black no she was just the first all right the first associate uh, director social strategy influence at horizon media where she secured comedy and parenting influencers for top brands in the entertainment spirit cpg what is cpg sweetie what is that consumer packaged goods oh like okay shampoo, oreos oh, okay all right consumer I, the, the stuff that i buy a lot okay yes. and automotive categories <laughs> um she was also named to talking uh, influences 2018 top industry uh player list and is a member of real-time academy a short form 
Arts and Sciences, and where she is judges the annual Shorty Awards. If you've not heard about the Shorty Awards, go look it up. It's You'll see that's where the mega influencers are. I mean, I saw this one little Asian girl. She had like 100 million people following her on uh, YouTube. Just a dance. <laughs> I'm like, why have I not even heard of her? Okay? It's like everybody in the world has seen her videos except for me. So <laughs> when you go on the Shorty Awards, you will be so surprised of how many influencers there are. And the Shorty social good awards and she's also judge of the two, 2019 influencer marketing awards which i started following today on on uh, twitter so right <laughs> now um oh don't want to talk about that yet okay so right now we're going to just really hear from Brittany about the whole influencer space and then we're going to take q a so um i've given you a background on how she really got into it how she got started um give us maybe your background so people will know how that came about in terms of you actually working with Hearst Magazine, because you're basically, you're a journalist or a journalism major. So why <laughs> writing is important in, in any of this. Absolutely. So I majored in journalism. I went to Rutgers and I wanted to be a feature writer. I wanted to write cover stories for Rolling Stone. I had a very specific career goal. That's what I wanted to do. It's Rolling Stone. No one else. <laughs> Just Rolling Stone. I wanted to write the cover stories for Rolling Stone. And it was funny because I graduated right when print was dying and digital was coming up. And no one would hire me because I didn't have any digital experience, even though no one did. And so I did a lot of internships in like PR. I did, you know, I worked in music. I had a bunch of internships and I landed at a town agency. And at Abrams Artists, which now reps a bunch of influencers and I've booked them. And I was an agent in training. So like Lloyd from Entourage and I did commercial talent. So now, even now, if I watch television commercials, I know who all the people are because I worked with them at some point. And then it was nice. I had like a full circle moment because that's the agency I'm signed to now as an author. Wow. So that is very, very fun. So that I worked full circle. Yeah, very nice. So I worked there for about a year. And this was in 2007 when blogs were starting to pop up. So I just made like a little blog. And I just, I was still getting invited to parties and events. All my friends worked in PR. So I was going to those and writing about them. And I really was writing about it for me and not for anyone else. And then one day my blog went viral. And so one of the lessons I learned from that is, and people say this all the time, it's like, uh, spend a lot of time getting ready. So when your time comes, you are ready. Because yes. I was not ready. My site crashed. I went to log on, my site was down. I was like, what's going on here? And my phone, everyone's like, you're on the cover of like newyorkmagazine.com, like the story that you wrote. And I'm like, New York Magazine reads my blog? Apparently so. And so they had linked to it and I had to like up my hosting really quick. And then I was like, oh my God, my sidebar is a mess. And I don't have this and I don't have that. And I don't have a proper bio. So the first day I was like trying to like fix all these things. And then all these people were emailing me like, hey, I see you have this blog. Come to my thing. Come to this thing. How much did you do? And, and I just was like, I am not prepared to do any of this. So I think, you know, you don't want to spend too much time preparing because you actually need to do the thing, but you should spend a little bit of time or at least have a quick outlay of like, if I get a huge press hit or if I go viral, what are the first three things I'm going to do? Because mm. I spent all day trying to like get the correcting spelling errors over here. Cause like, I just was throwing it up, you know, this, you know, but then all these people were reading it. And so I spent a lot of time doing that. So I was working on my blog. It was picking up. I was doing a bunch of things and I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. And then I had quit my job to go to law school. Okay. Because I was bored. And I like a challenge. So I was like, I'll go to law school. My boyfriend at the time and my, my boyfriend at the time and my, my best friend was in law school and my boyfriend was a lawyer. So I said, oh, I'll go to law school. Why not? So I went to law school, which I hated. I did a few months and I dropped out. Absolutely hated it. But I met my husband there. So it's okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's pretty good. I yeah, mean, imagine. just because you're bored doesn't mean like all of a sudden <laughs> I'm going to take the LSAT and I get into a law school. Okay. So you miss yeah. all that. That most, people, most people don't even get in. 
People have always told me I should be a lawyer because I like to fight with people, but you don't get to fight with people in law school. So like, don't go to law school for that because it's very misleading. Mm -hmm. But I was still kind of blogging and going to law school and I had to, I had to choose. I had a group project meeting the same, I had a group project due the same week as fashion week. Ooh. And I was like, this is not going to work. Like I'm going to fashion week. And my professor was like, well, if you don't hand this in, you're going to fail. And I was like, well, I guess I'm taking a semester off then. And I went to the dean and I was like, I'm not picking legal writing over a fashion week. Like, I got invited to BCBG. I got invited to like Tadashi Shoji. Like, I have to go to these events. Like, I have things to do. And so she was like, if that's what you want to do. So I took a break and I went and like did my blog. I was working on it. And I got a call from someone who said, you know, do you have a passport? And I, it was like, there was this, this new influencer marketing company. And I was like, what is influencer marketing? Because it's very early. And they were like, do you have a passport? And they said, because we're doing this big trip for Nivea and we want you to go to Germany and hang out with Rihanna and tweet about it. And I, I was think. like, yeah, yeah, I have a passport. Did not have a passport. But I was like, I will figure that out later. Like, I'm not going to say no. And so it turned out that they were searching for people to go on this trip and the main casting person, three different people told him that I needed to go on this trip. So he said, you know, I knew I had to send you because everyone was saying you should go. So that's really cool. That's an, another lesson I learned there is if people don't know what you're doing, they cannot recommend you for stuff. True. And, and so you were very you focused on your blog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to, you know, if you are making like, if you're making a program for children or you've built an online platform, lots of times you tend to keep that to yourself because you're still building it. Maybe it doesn't make any money. You've only been doing it for a short time. But if you're making something and you're not proud enough of it to tell other people, there's no reason why somebody should jump onto your brand and read your content, book your services. You're supposed to be your biggest cheerleader. So mm -hmm. I was really out there telling anybody who would listen, I have this blog, it's huge, it's gonna be amazing. But enough people were like, oh, you need a girl to do this? Like, I know somebody, you should call her. So I didn't have a passport, but my other thing, you know, that I learned is just figure it out later. And then I learned, if you have a plane ticket, you can get a passport in 24 hours. So it worked out. And so I went to Germany, I hung out with Rihanna. She is lovely and I was on a cruise with her and like I had to tweet about it. And then I came back and I was like, I'm going into social media, I'm not gonna write anymore. And so I got into, and everybody I knew, this is when Facebook pages were coming out and people were still trying to figure out like what is going on with Foursquare and all these things. I had all my friends as clients. So all my friends who worked at these big nightclubs and restaurants, they were like, well, can you do our Facebook page? And can you do our Twitter page? And so I became like a mini social media agency. Mm -hmm. So I was working through that, still doing my blog. And then I had a friend who I knew she used to rep Grey Goose. And I used to go to the Grey Goose parties as a blogger. She started, she was the director at Horizon Media. And so oh. she brought me on because I spoke influencer fluently. And so mm -hmm. I worked there and I did everything from casting all the way down to analytics and I really just wanted to cast and so I went looking for a job and the Hearst job was available and I actually applied for it and I didn't get it because I asked for too much money so the computer like put me you know it just rejects you right. and I was like oh no I need this job so I went through my LinkedIn looking for anybody I knew who worked there to be like you've got to get me around this computer I love LinkedIn <laughs> yeah I need to get to the person who's hiring and it turned out that someone I met in Germany on my Nivea trip was on the team that I wanted to join. So wow. she got me a meeting with my soon to be boss and I had the job three days later. Wow. So I that worked there. Cool. And that yeah. was, that was the one Hustling. with the, the director of the um, social media strategy and influence. Yes. So I went there and that was like my job title. And I did a lot to get like multiple promotions because I'm like, if you are not going to pay me a lot more, you got to give me some things. I got to have some growth in this job. So mm -hmm. I was building that and I kept working with influencers who were selling themselves short by not. I had a girl who I had $10,000 for her. She asked me for $2,500. I could not believe it. People wow. who were signing contracts and I know they didn't read them. 
And if you're working for a brand, you can't really help people with these things because I work for a company. Like I'm, I'm doing what's in corporate's best interest, even if it's not in yours. And so this book was a way for me to tell people, here are all the things you're doing wrong and read this so that everything is better. And it was tough because after the book came out, people were using my own techniques on me. And I was like, this is not fair. They were like <laughs> writing me back. Trying to and negotiate was, the counter deal. It was, it was exactly like my template from the book, word for word. They were like, thank you so much. I was like, are you copying my book back to me? I was like, okay, good move, good move. But it, it turned into, you know, it really became a thing where I was like, they're really influencer marketing, so much money flowing into it. And if you just look, they're constantly making platforms for brands, there's conferences for brands, there's all these books for brands. And I said, but influencers are the other half of that equation. And so if the brands have all this money to spend, but there aren't people who can receive that money and do a good job and negotiate their contracts, we're gonna have a really big problem. And so that's when I decided, okay, I'm gonna make the jump. I'm gonna leave corporate money. Corporate money is lovely, <laughs> but right you know, <laughs> and I said, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna help the influencers. I'm gonna help them figure out how to get their profiles together. I'm gonna to help them figure out how to pitch, how to negotiate, how mm -hmm. to figure out after I'm an influencer, what next? Like what business am I going to build? off of yes. this brand yes. and really sure. focusing there. And you know, as much as my corporate friends hate me, they're like, Brittany, everybody charges more now, thank you. <laughs> or everyone's crossing out all these lines in our contract that we used to get away with. But they also said, you know, the quality of influencers and their work has risen ah. because they just needed people to help them. Influencers are out here just stumbling forward, figuring it out for themselves, even like the Michelle Fons and like I mean songs and like these huge people, they had no idea what they were doing when they were starting because they were first. Mm -hmm. So they're just kind of like, and it was a different time. So you can't even follow what they're doing because they became influencers 10 years ago when there were like six bloggers and nobody was on YouTube. And now it's like everybody and their mom has 10,000 followers. So you really have to try to i tried to lay out like a blueprint like if you do these things i can't guarantee you'll you'll be successful but you will be a lot closer than if you do this on your own and so just mm -hmm. figuring out you know those things and learning a lot of lessons that in the end of my book i share all those lessons like how i met my husband how i had the fake it till you make it how i just was like saying yes to things and like i'll figure out how to get this done later but I'm going to say yes now, you know, because I think a lot of people, especially women, especially black women, if everything is not perfectly together, we don't take the step forward. That's true. And men, particularly white men, they're like 50 yards down the field and they don't even know what the, you know, they don't even know what's happening yet. They're just like, this looks like a good opportunity. I'm going. I will have all the time between here and there to figure it out. Figure and I think we have to do we have to do a lot more of that because in all that time you spend deliberating and second guessing yourself, somebody has already taken that opportunity and they probably are less qualified than you are, just they have a little more guts. And you need a lot of that to go far because nobody really knows what they're doing. It's, <laughs> even it's, that, still, it's still too, it's too, too brand new, first of all. Yeah, it's too new. So even but me, think, I'm like I, the expert navigating and even I'm learning stuff all the time. I'm like, oh, this is new. Oh, this is new. So nobody can expect to be perfect. So what do you do? Primarily you do coaching with influencers and then also brands come to you for you to book. So you're like a casting agent and then also to you prep the influencers or you guide the influencers. Like say for instance, um, out of all of the ladies that are on here today, they want to become influencers. They mm -hmm. have an audience, they, they do know their avatar and they want to be an influencer. So is that the same as like really uh, pitching like a sponsor? Because last week we had... Uh, lady on that talked about sponsors and the sponsors were really for live events so right. sponsor is like you know we put together a sponsor deck and that sort of thing mm -hmm. so an influencer is that very similar or how well, would think, that differ yeah i think with any of these things you know people even when you're pitching sponsors they're not necessarily buying an event they're buying a person 
they, you pitch them, they're looking at you, they're looking for your passion for the project, they're looking for like, how good is your, your programming going to be? And so they're signing on trusting you that you're going to get this done. And so the same thing happens when you're pitching brands, it's all really figuring out who are you, what's your mission, and if I'm going to co-sign your brand, what does that mean? And so I think that's really figuring out like, who are you and what do you do? So like I still cast for brands, mostly my friends when they're like, do you have a Latina who's 21 and is the first person in her, your, you know, her family to go to college and has 10,000 followers? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I have a few of those, hold on. And then I'll like help them out. But I mostly spend time with people figuring out, I call it like the four, it's the same as the four stages in the book. So the first one is like building your community. Mm-hmm. And that's when you're figuring out like, what's your message what are you offering and why should people follow you read your blog buy your service like why you and not someone else Mm -hmm. and i think that's the time that's the piece that people should spend the most time on and it's actually the piece that people spend the least amount of time on everyone's like work because it's work yeah it's like (laughs) and it's hard like reflective stuff because there are plenty of people who are like i want to be a luxury fashion blogger and i'm like nothing about you is luxury like it's okay to be target and tj maxx there's nothing wrong with that like if that's who you are then that's who you are you can have aspirations but like we gotta be realistic you know if you if you're you know five foot one you can't say i'm gonna be in the nba like no you're not you can want to play basketball but you're not going to be in the nba and so it's being realistic. And then once you know, okay, these are the things I'm good at, do you have anything to say about them? And that I think is really the difference between having an engaged community and having like just followers. Because they had this girl who has 2 million followers and couldn't sell 36 shirts. And the oh internet had like a field trip with her. And I went to her profile and right away I was like, well, that was obvious because she doesn't really have a brand, like a strong brand. I don't know who she is. I don't know like what is, what's her mission? What's her mantra? She's just like this pretty girl who takes pictures. Okay. Why would I buy something from you? You know, like you're not. And so you see that even with some of the influencers who are, and I coach a lot of them who are struggling. And I say, you have to be in the beginning. You could just be pretty. Then a few, like a year later, you could just be pretty, but you also needed to write good captions. Now you need to be like, and pretty is pretty. It just means you photograph well. And if you need to throw some filters on and edit, then do that. It doesn't mean like, Mm -hmm. yeah, just like know your angles, get good lighting and get a good filter. Everybody's beautiful on Instagram. So, you know, and then it became, well, what value are you adding? Because they're everybody's a life coach, self-help coach, fitness guru, you know, everyone is the best at these things. And technically, if you spend a thousand hours doing something, you are an expert. So there are all these experts in all these fields. Why would I follow you? Like people who do personal style, it's like, then your style has to be great. And I have to love it because I'm watching you for inspiration. When you look at a lot of beauty influencers, they're talking about like products. They're like, okay, this sunscreen and this sunscreen look the same, but this is why they're different. Like they're giving you insider knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then fitness, they could be walking you through their journey or they're actually trained. Same thing with food. This is what I like to cook or I'm a chef and this is what I'm cooking. Or even with coaching things, you know, there are plenty of people I see on the internet who are like, I'm a social media expert. And I'm like, really? Because I looked at your LinkedIn and you've never worked in social media. So how do you know what happens? You just know your personal stuff, which is great if you're selling it as this is what I did and maybe it'll work for you, maybe it won't. But if you're trying to tell people like, no, I know what's best for you, you have to actually be good at that thing. And so I think plenty of people don't spend enough time figuring out what are they good at? What do they have to offer? Because a bunch of these people who have Instagrams have no business telling anyone how to do anything. Like these financial people who I'm like, I know you in real life and your whole situation is a mess. Who are you (laughs) giving advice to? No, 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 no. It's like these parenting experts who don't have children. I'm like, have some kids and then you come back to me. And let me or a relationship person who's been divorced 18 times. I mean, but they could tell you what not to do. 
Well, that's true. <laughs> I can do that all day, I guess. <laughs> no, maybe it's a little different. So, you know, you want to figure that out. And then you want to figure out, like, what's your, what's your brand? Like, the way I write my, I speak the same way I write, the same way as my Instagram. I make fun of things. I'm very blunt. I side-eye people a lot. You know, and I think people try to have this persona on the internet. And you spend so much time creating content and putting out content that you can't fake it. You'll be tired being right. somebody else all the time. That's true. Like, I know people who I see them on social media and I know them in real life. And I'm like, you must be exhausted because you are two different people. Like, this is not you at all. And if you're, if you're signing up for that, that's okay. Because it's the same thing with an actor. You know, they have these roles, but that's not them in real life. So if you're going to make a persona and lots of of YouTubers and Viners, they made these characters that they play on the internet. And that's not who they are in real life. So that's fine because there's a disclaimer. But if you're pretending that this is who you really are, that gets old very fast. And then you can't go out in public because heaven forbid somebody meets you in real life, they're going to be like, she is a fraud. Yeah. Right. The mm -hmm. same thing goes with, like I said this in the book, like editing your face so much that people don't recognize you. Because I've met people and I'm like, where's... Where is the person from Instagram? Who, who is this? You look different. It's because they're editing their face. So you want to spend a little time. <laughs> yeah. So they, do, they, they can do the face and the entire body too. So that's the other thing. Yeah. And I curves, saw somebody do lines. that. This chair looks a little funny. It's like, you are doing something weird in this photo. So, you know, people, and I always say there are enough people on Instagram at this point who if you create content in your authentic self, there are people who will come and find you who will like you. And that's what they're looking for. If you spend a lot of time being someone else or trying to like capture this other community, you're gonna pick up followers who don't actually like you. They just like this person you play on the internet. And then you're gonna get attention from brands and you know partnerships that those are not actually things that align with your mission. And then that's how you can end up being a very successful influencer and feeling extremely empty because mm. you're like, I have all this stuff. I don't even like this brand. I don't even like this product. You don't like any of those things, but you're making money. But I deal with a lot of them who are like, you know, this isn't even really who I am. And it's like, well, wow. you got to, yeah. Cause it's one of those things. It just starts. And it just, it just snowballs, you know, that's just who you end up being. And then it takes on a life of its own. So you want to really figure that out because that helps you in all the other steps. When you're packaging your brand, you'll know, okay, my brand are, are these colors and it's very playful and it's funky. And so then if someone asks you to speak on a panel, you could look at it and be like, mm, that's not my brand. Like this, these are not my people or your mission doesn't vibe with mine or whatever it is because you know who you are so you know who you're not and that's important especially when you get to the money part because once people start throwing money at you you question all your your motivations goals you're like oh that's i've never shopped at that store before but that's a lot of money or i actually hate that brand but that's a lot of money. And so you want to figure out all these things while no one is paying you and while you don't have a sponsorship and while, you know, you haven't booked the commercial or any of that, because when you're free and when you're broke is when you're at your truest self. That's what I say. When you have nothing, you find out who you really are. So well, that's where you usually started. more creative when you don't have a lot to work with. Yep. You're very yeah. creative. That's so that's when you really want to figure out all of those things. And then when the money starts coming, you can say no. And I think a lot of the really good influencers, they say no all the time. I had a girl turn down $50,000 because it was not on brand for her. And I was like, really? Wow. $50,000? This is not on brand? Okay. Like, I could really respect that because... I know uh, uh, that movie is Fire, Fire Island. That, which Jenner was that, that that took the money for fire? Oh, the fire festival. Fire festival. Yeah. Was that? was that Caitlin or which one was? I don't I know. I think that was maybe Kendall. I think yeah. Kendall. Yeah, Kendall's the model. I yeah. She wish she would have said no to that. You know, it, is Kendall having problems? Does Kendall have a cash flow problem? Do we talk about her less? No. No. She, no. 
they this is these are these are concerns for us ordinary people <laughs> she <laughs> she doesn't have she doesn't have to play by these rules they live in this alternate universe where like you can post and an that guy, that guy went to jail she didn't go to jail so it was yeah a- and get two hundred fifty thousand dollars like they just showed up for a shoot somebody gave them a photo and they posted it and they were like listen we were not involved and they weren't if you're not involved in all of that you're not involved i mean it looked on brand for her luxury yachts right TV, right you know he got but a quarter you, of a million dollars to do <laughs> one photo. To do, to do one post. And I think, you know, and I think there is this even, big, Just so you guys know that it was like the, this uh, concert that didn't even exist. You know, it was. No, it just, this is the one with the sad. They had cheese sandwiches and it was supposed <laughs> to be gourmet food and the whole thing was just. It was a sleeping in tents. It should have been uh, cabanas. And, yeah, I mean, it didn't have water. It but, was, you know, it's one of those things people are saying, like, does, does she get paid too much? And I think when you really figure out who you are, what you're doing, and you connect with your audience on that level, they trust you. And that's what people are paying for, which is yeah. why there are some influencers who have 5 million followers, but they will post about anything under the sun as long as you pay them. So their oh. audience doesn't trust them, and they don't make as much money as people think they do. Because a, an, a brand just looks at it as, this is the same as buying an advertisement. Yeah. Like, we need it to be on your square, like on your feed, but like, we don't really expect too much. This is just so people are aware. Then you have people who really only promote and partner with the things that they love. Some of those people can be much smaller, but you can make a lot of money if your audience actually cares about what you think. And mm-hmm. so I know someone, she does, she's, she has triplets. Oh my God, triplets, yeah. So she has like this community of triplet, like moms of multiples. And so twins and threes and fours and fives, I can't. But they talk about, you know, how to, how to deal sleep. with your, hmm? How to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and that, things like how to deal with your apartment when you thought you were going to have one kid and find out you're having three. Like, do you just move? Like, what do you do now? So she has all these like tips that she puts together and brands, she's very small, maybe like 3,000, 4,000, but she can charge as much as someone with 100,000 followers because if you are making like a triple stroller, that's your girl. Because yeah. other people with a lot of followers, how many of, how many of their followers have multiple? Who knows? Right. Maybe none. But her... That's your community. So yeah. she charges insane amounts of money and she's smart. And like, if you're a tall blogger or a petite blogger, like if they want to get to tall people, you're the best person to go through because everybody who follows you is tall. And I so I think, that. yeah, people spend a lot of time trying to have a lot of followers, but if they're not the right kind of people, what are you going to do with that? It's like, it's the same as like throwing pasta and hoping it sticks. So you want to know, like, if you're going to do parenting, you want to go after parents to follow you. If you're going to do relationships up, you want to make sure, like, the people who follow you are in relationships. And so I think it's less about how many and having the right kind. And then talking to your audience to get that information. So if you have followers or if you have people who sign up for your newsletter or bought your product, you should always send them a survey. Maybe they win something and get this information about them. Because how are you supposed to know, you know? And when you're going for a partnership, a sponsorship, a brand, anything, the more information you can present why you're the better candidate, that's how you have an edge over someone else. When you look at media, like when I worked at Cosmopolitan, Cosmo could tell you where everybody lived, how old they were, how often they went drinking, do they have one night stands, how much underwear do they own? You know, it's like the, you know, the millennial, like hot mess girl who like wakes up in somebody else's apartment. So that's their brand. And they know a lot about their audience. So they can pitch a brand and say, you could go to this magazine, but go ask them, you know, how often does their reader go to brunch? I bet you they don't know. And they're right. So it's learning that sort of information. So if someone wants, if you're doing an event, and so once a sponsor, you can say, you know, we're going to sell tickets and I'm not necessarily sure who will buy tickets because anybody can buy a ticket to your event. Say, but the community I'm promoting it to 
65% of them have graduated college or 14% of them have ha owned a business before. Mm -hmm. You need to have some sort of idea because that makes it seem like, oh, you're doing your part to help me. Because yes. whether they're giving you sponsorship money or brand money, they're hiring you for a service. Not because you're pretty or like you make nice content. They're hiring you because they have a message that they need to get to an audience and you are the vessel that that message is going to go through. So the more you can explain to people why you're the right person, and that's even with clients. Why should they pick you instead of someone else who does exactly what you do? The more you can explain to them, like, this is why I'm different, or this is why my audience is important, that sounds like somebody who knows what they're doing, and I will trust those people with my money, yes. as opposed to someone who's like, I don't, I don't know how many people do this, or I don't know how many people do that. Mm. So that's all like the pre-work that happens way in the front, and it's the hard work that you have to do, but it just makes the rest of your job so much easier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to play really quick and then um, see if anybody has any questions. Brittany, this is so good. I'm getting chats over here. They were like, thank you so much. This is so good. This is so good. Uh, she said, uh, Magdalene said, this is amazing information. And it is because it's brand new. Influencer marketing is really relatively brand new. You're the go-to person you carved out that lane you quit your corporate job and you walked out on faith and said i'm going to do it and you're really making an impact and so i want to play this little particular this was a short one i sent them earlier the one when you were on the uh today show i believe it was or good morning america mm. it, it was so that one so i'm gonna play this one really quick and this is what she looks for in a content what you, creator what do you look for when it comes to an influencer as far as their appearance on different platforms is it important for them to be on all of them or is it more important them, for them to really have an audience on one specific platform? How do you sort of gauge that? Sure. So I think everyone has to have an Instagram at this point because that's where most of the dollars are being spent. That's what advertisers are comfortable with. So you have to definitely have it. If you're great on video, have a YouTube. If you're awful on video, stay off of it. <laughs> like you don't, you don't need to be on YouTube. You can, if you're a great writer and you like long form content, have a blog. The most important thing is to be consistent because the worst thing is for you to say, you know, and check out my blog and I go and you haven't posted anything in three months. Then you're not a blogger. I don't know what you're doing, but it's not blogging. So yeah, it's, you want to diversify, but you definitely want to make sure that it's consistent and all the content is good. You mentioned frequency in the book and you did just now. Um, why is it so important to post so often and how often should people be posting? I think a lot of influencers post, they have schedules. So they might have YouTube videos that come out on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and they might post an Instagram post every day. We're creatures of habit. It's just like if you go to watch your favorite TV show and it is not on, you're like, what, where, where is my show? And they think audiences spend so much time with creators that they feel like they own a little bit of that. <laughs> and so they're very much like... Your video comes out Wednesdays at 7. I sit down to watch it. It's 7.05. You have not uploaded your video. Wait, where is it? Did you die? And so, you know, people really are, they, they, have, they have incorporated the influencer into their life. And so they are waiting for that content. I think Tenny can speak to, like, they feel like they know you. I like that. I like that. So that, that is, that right there, what you just said, it's like, just as long as you're consistent. And yeah, so yeah. Uh, let's talk about consistency. There was a influencer, I guess she's an influencer. Her name is Lovey. Mm -hmm. That's a side, because you told me, you know, that she does like the side eye thing. But she was a person that got discovered, I guess you would say, because she would consistently put out tweets that were so hilarious during scandal. And right. And that's how she really became, I mean, she was like that all the time, but basically she would tweet during scandal and they would scandal themselves would retweet them because she had such a sarcastic kind of way where she tweeted and, and it just, you know, then she became very political. So can, do you know anything about her story or where she is now? I know that right now she's a bestseller author. She got a book contract <laughs> out of just tweeting. It's like, what? Yeah. So, you know, Love is a really good example of that sort of consistency because like I said, even with my New York Magazine piece, you never know who's watching you. I highly, thought, I highly doubt she knew Shonda Rhimes was watching her tweets in the very beginning. Maybe she was, maybe she wasn't, but if it's consistent, there's somebody who it's their job 
to look for people who are talking about them. Like that's the social media manager of scandal. That's their job. So if they see that and then they say, hey, you know, this other person, have you seen these? And then it goes up the line. That's how you end up in front of a Shonda. If you have a favorite brand and you're constantly posting about them, the person who manages that Instagram, they see you. And then when there's a campaign, they're like, where's that girl who's always posting about us? Like, let's go get her. And so if you do something once, twice, then people are not sure, well, do you really love this? Or was that like a fluke? So you never, the consistency is key because you never know who is watching. If you look at, you know, even like tons of YouTubers who end up in movies and get discovered and end up being models. Like Shawn Mendes, who I love, he was on Vine, you know? And like Tori Kelly on YouTube, just singing songs. Justin Bieber is, I think, the first example, like on MySpace, just putting out his little songs and like Usher found him. Like you, I highly doubt Justin Bieber knew Usher was looking at his MySpace, you know? <laughs> so it's one of those things where you really do not know who sends who sent this piece of content to your to their friend to their family member and where it's going to go so you have to be consistent and always put out like your best work because that might be what gets you to the next step you have big breaks all the time i wrote this book and all these people who like started following me and i'm like oh you read my book you read my book and it's cool because you write something or you make a video where you never know who will read it and then what opportunity that will open for you. So you've got to make sure that you're consistent and your stuff is good. And it's hard. It's really hard. Even I will go a few days without posting on Instagram and I'm like, let me get on here before people start yelling at me. that I'm not practicing what I preach because it's hard and you have life, you know, you have other things. And if that particular thing is just a piece of what you're doing and not like your main thing, like I'm not a fashion influencer, like that's not how I make my money, like being cute on Instagram. So those things end up not being so much of a priority, but you have to stay consistent because, you know, people are relying on you. And the last thing you want to do is let down your community because that's supposed to be why you're doing this in the first place. It's real funny. Uh, if anybody has any questions, put them in the chat or just raise your hand. I had um, my daughter. She only has like maybe 1,500 followers, I guess. So whenever she posts a picture, she gets like two or 300 likes, right, on her pictures. And it's like mm -hmm. no real purpose, just, you know, just a thing. Just she likes doing makeup or whatever. So the other day she put up a picture and only got like immediately like 25 likes. But normally she would post something, she'll get hundreds, right? So she deleted it. I'm like, what happened? It was a cute picture. She said, I deleted it. I said, why? She says, because it just wasn't getting the traction. And I'm like, <laughs> it's not performing. It's, it's not, not performing. And right. that's her best work. I'm like, what? I said, so <laughs> this is, this is, it's not performing. She said, well, I put it in my story. I said, oh, okay. So yeah. It's kind of like, you put it there. Yeah. But if you don't get, she's not getting like immediately hundreds right away, then she just deletes it because it's like, her audience is not responding to it. And what it was is that it was a picture. Normally she posts pictures of just her or makeup or the caption, but this was a picture of a group people. And people- Oh, they don't care about her friends. They ain't care about her friends. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. I said, you have a little tribe that's very funny. So- Yeah, but they don't, people, they don't, they're like, who are these people? We don't know. We don't care about them. <laughs> So you have to know your tribe. And that's really mm -hmm. the main thing that you're saying, being authentic with your tribe, talking to them, even if you feel like no one's watching, being consistent with it. But there are some things, and, I, and I, you talk about in the book, you says, don't be that girl. So give me some of those don't be that girl moments in the book. Um, I think it was one, well, you say so many that says don't be that girl, but give us like some top maybe two of don't be that girl on so it being an influencer. Sure. So the favorite, my favorite one is like, don't act like you're a famous person because you're yeah. not. And you know, especially it happens with bigger influencers who are nationally known, but it also happens with like local influencers. Like there's an influencer, she lives in Atlanta and she like thinks she's hot shit because she can't go outside in Atlanta. Everybody knows her. But I was like, but when you leave Atlanta, nobody knows who you are. So that's not famous. You're not famous. Right. And so I think, you know, I think people forget that online is online and that does not always transfer to the real world. So you definitely want to stay humble. You can be like very 
very good at, at what you do and like popular, but you are an internet personality or you have one company until you're like, and she's a great example. Like Kim Kardashian's got like a ton of followers. Even if you don't like her, you know who she is. You know how many kids she has. Like she's like inescapable. She's almost like oxygen. Like it's just, she's everywhere all the time. She's famous. These other people, I'm like, you're popular, but you're not famous. So, like, acting like they're so famous they can't be bothered with whatever you're asking them to do is a no. And being mean, just no. So many influencers are, like, extremely demanding or unprofessional or, like, don't respond to emails on time or, like, Ooh. say they're going to do something by this date and they don't do it. Everybody knows life gets in the way, but, like, I think the thing people forget is because for a lot of people – influencer marketing is a hobby for them they don't realize that on the other end of those emails it's like a multi-billion dollar industry and there are like people who are like me and like i got paid to send you this email like i'm working at my nine to five you're, you're like fiddling in your your side hustle but this is my job and so i think people forget that that there's actually like a whole industry functioning around them and they're very 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 small part and that's where you get in trouble because it's a big industry with a lot of money, but the number of people who cast, very small community, and we all talk to each other. So someone will say, hey, even every day people are like, hey, I'm thinking about booking this person. Do you know her? And I'm like, oh yeah, she was super pleasant. Or no, that girl is a nightmare. Stay away from her. And so we all talk to each other. Yeah. So you have to always be super professional, super nice because you never know who we know. And so I think it's a big industry, but there are only like maybe 50 main players who like cast a lot. And we all know each other. <laughs> so, okay. it's, you know, remembering that I think will help you not be that girl. Anything you would, anything that applies to your like nine to five life should apply to your influencer life. Okay. This is the okay. same. And, and the yeah. influence themselves, like you said, when you coach people, you're coaching people how to, produce better content because they're content creators and so you're mm -hmm. coaching them how to produce better content not uh, whether their videos are more on point or they're doing better camera shots or whatever it is you're just helping them up level their um their their content whether it's yeah like just looking or, at it from like a brand perspective like this who are you trying to go after well this is what they would see so helping them with their content i help influencers like with their media kit I help them negotiate their contracts. That's actually my favorite part. People will get contracts and we will sit on the phone and we will go through it. And I'm like, ah, cross like this long. So, that, cross so that one year law school helped. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it helped. It helped right, right there. And so and negotiating that. Yeah. <laughs> I got, I got two things, two things out of it. So it was all right. <laughs> but you know, doing that, just helping people because lots of times influencers, especially if you're not big, they're the only influencer they know. So they don't even have anyone to ask. They're like, I don't, or their friends think the fact that they're an influencer is stupid. <laughs> you know, there are plenty of people who are like, I don't tell, none of my friends know that I do this. And I'm like, what do you mean your friends don't know you're an influencer? It's very strange. I had a, a, a client that I coached years ago. She was a publicist and she wanted mm -hmm. to transition from being a publicist. She worked with the movie industry. You probably know her. And she really wanted to be not an actress, but a person that brands would pay to be an influencer. So Erin Simone, because she used to be around, she used to do all the movies and she would do like, she knew the, you know, Idris Elba or she just, you know, she knew all these movie stars. So people from association, from her posting pictures of her with the stars of the movies she worked on, she became known. Then yeah. she became very, very well known. And then she quit being like the movie publicist and then she's now her own brand yeah. in Simone. So that's now what she does in terms of um, learning a whole new industry from the influence of the Hollywood, I guess you would say, the Hollywood yeah. actors. And then from there, she leveraged it into her own brand. Is that a good strategy to take pictures with famous people until you're famous? <laughs> <laughs> I think so you definitely want to do associations because that's how people figure out who you are. So that's why if you want to be known for fitness, if you're around people, fitness people help, you know? So I think 
you want to definitely figure out, that's why you want to figure out who am I and what's my brand, because that will tell you who you need to associate with. Okay. Okay. Any questions, guys, for Brittany? We're right at eight o'clock here. So if we don't have any questions, I mean, let's see. I'm going to put this here. I'm going to go to the next slide here. So Brittany, I want you to tell us about this event here. Oh, so this is coming up in July, Yay. and it's in Charlotte, and I'm going to be doing a fireside chat at Ignite Your Influence, and I'm super excited. I love fireside chats, because I just get to talk a lot, so <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be a lot of fun, and I think it's going to be like 300 people, mm -hmm. and it's got some great people on it. I always like judge the flyer. I'm like, who else is on this flyer with me? But yeah. these are all really, really good. Explain. Do you have you ever worked with any of these influence influencers? I'm so really Maddie, Maddie James, I have tried to book her so many times, but she was very small when I first found her. She's like amazing now and like killing it. But she, I think, didn't even have ten thousand followers, and it was like people were like, "She's too small." I'm like, "Oh, but she's so good." So I can't wait to meet her. I'm super excited. She is good. I like her. her background. Primarily was in journalism. I can't remember. I don't know, but I know she's like an industry person and like industry influencers tend to be the best. Some of the best ones used to work in advertising. They used to work in PR. So mm -hmm. they like know what they expect to get. So they give that. And so they do really well. Yeah. So all of these, when you see these handles, that's all of their Instagram. Yeah. And so it's going to be a great event. Yeah. Do you think that Instagram for influencer marketing is because maybe your audience, say if it's um, Kimberly and she deals with a lot of baby boomers and, or Dr. Geneva, do you think that Facebook, if you have a lot of Facebook or LinkedIn, you know, where the older baby boomers are, when I say baby boomers, maybe 55, 60 and up, this, that that's where they should be or make their audience travel with Every, them everyone, everyone is on Instagram. Everyone's so on Instagram. Okay. yeah, everyone's on Instagram. Like, all of you are on Instagram. Your friends are on Instagram. Like everybody's on Instagram at this point. So I think you might not be as large because like millennials, I think we're the largest group now just in general. So, and we're more likely to be on Instagram, but if you are over 50, no one's expecting you to have a hundred thousand followers. Like okay. where did all these people come from? You know, the more, the more specific your niche people know, like if you're like a fashion blogger or a beauty blogger, people want you to be big because lots of people like fashion and beauty. But if you're doing like, you know, vintage style for over 50, like that's like six people. So if you have seven followers, I'm like, seven? That's one more than I expected. That's amazing. Right. So right. I think, so you know. Know what, know what the yeah. capacity of that audience is. Yeah. So, Joe, it's just as long as you have to look around you at people who are doing what you're doing, and that's how you can judge. Because if you're doing something and you have 5,000, but lots of people have 100,000, you probably want to have more numbers. But if you've got 10 and most people have like 25 or 30, you're doing really well. So that's the one time I think you can ah. do some comparisons just to see like what else is happening in the field. Well, then that explains I'm on Snapchat and none of my friends are on Snapchat, <laughs> but I have like 500 people following me on Snapchat and I'm killing it because ain't nobody 59 years old on Snapchat. <laughs> there you go. I was like, how come I can't get more people on Snapchat? It was like, be on Snapchat. Nope, nobody, nobody's, nobody's on Snapchat anymore. Nobody's on Snapchat. Okay, well, no, <laughs> they, just, they they weren't over there anyway. Because I, I once just, once Kylie Jenner got off, that was it. Ah, okay, <laughs> all right, okay. Uh, Dr. Geneva says, can you explain that again? Meaning oh, sure. So you just, you want to compare yourself to people doing something similar, not just to all people. So if you're a doctor on Instagram, look at other doctors. How many followers do they have? If somebody, if they, if everybody has a million, then you probably need to get close to a million. But if everybody has 5,000 and you have 4,000, you're doing a good job. So that's the one time it's okay to compare yourself to other people. Mm -hmm. But you know, the more specific your niche, the less followers you're going to have. And so then it's not really, cause again, it's not about the number. It's about if I'm trying to get to that demo, are you a good person to go through? Because that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you.
Does anybody think, who is this? This is in Charlotte, North Carolina. Who is in Charlotte, North Carolina? You know, Charlotte, I was thinking you're in Charlotte, but you're in actually in South Carolina. Uh, who's in North Carolina? You're in Richmond, Sandra. That might be a good conference to go to. It's going to be great. Yeah, yeah. That would really, really learn a lot. I don't know if Allison is still on, but that might be a good one for her to be, to go to as well. Um, so next up, uh, are there any other questions or not? Uh, next up is talking about leveraging your assets to create a gold mine. When I say leverage your assets, meaning that there's a blog post you did a couple of years ago, share it out. There's a podcast you did two years ago, share it out. There is um, some, put all your podcasts on one sheet, share that out. I mean, so there's things that how to leverage all of your assets to create a gold mine online. So when you Google yourself, you have some traction. And there's some things like this right here I found of Kiera. Kiera is now Kiera Johnson. And this is when she was Kiera Patterson. Even though it's a different name, it's still her content. So she could post this on her Instagram today. This is a throwback Thursday, but it shows that she won a plaque as a mover and shaker. So I don't know if when this was, um, when this particular post, if she was even on Instagram, right? But it shows that she was, honored as a mover and shaker. So I see a question here from Allison. Hold on one second. She raised her hand. Can you type in the chat or hold on? There we go. You have a question, Allison? Oops. You said my name a few minutes ago, but I didn't catch what you said. You said that might be good for Allison and I missed that. Oh, it was the uh, conference. It's the influencer continent. That's where um, Brittany's going to be speaking. She's doing a fireside. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, she's okay. doing fireside. Yes. I'll ignite your influence. Maddie James is going to be there. Valerie, what does Valerie do? What is her influence, uh, Brittany? Her um, her area of expertise is she? I'm like not a, sure. Her, I seem like a lot of them are beauty or um, beauty or uh, fashion type of things or hair. <laughs> oh, okay. So time's up. <laughs> That's the baby. <laughs> it's, time, I, it's bedtime. I know, I know. So I promise you eight. So we are we are all done. We are all done. So if there yeah, are no more everybody, questions. Everybody, you know, you can, I'm on Instagram, so you can follow me. You can send me a DM and say hi. DM. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much. This has really been good. This of is course. He is a ham. Do you see? He has an Instagram too. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> it's in my bio. You said a story in here about a dog that actually was making money too. So that like really sparked me. I was like, okay, well, I need to get my dog Instagram. Yeah, hey, dogs, are, dogs are better than kids too because your kid might grow up and say, mom, why'd you do that? Your dog's not going to say that. <laughs> right, right, right. Hey, Pam, mm -hmm. Pam, did Brittany tell us, did she share with us what her coaching services are? She just oh. says she works with the she works with influencers and people on how to do influencers. Yeah, if you go if you go on my Instagram and my bio, there's a link and it'll have all the, the different things. Because I have a bunch of different things for different needs. That is, yeah. And then if you have any questions, just either message me or shoot me an email. You were great. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks so much, Pam, for having me. It was thank so much fun. Everybody was lovely. This yeah. was really, really good. Well, thank you all so much. Like I said, if you have questions for Mrs. Brittany Hennessy, it has two T's, two N's, and two S's in your name. So, you know, I know that. It was like, okay, make sure I don't misspell her name. Uh, <laughs> so, make sure that. And so, I would. I think I'm going to try and see you at, your, at the event where you're going to be speaking at in July as well oh fantastic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that look that will be really really good so thank you so much you guys if there aren't any questions you can always connect with her let her know you're from the branding seller slide her a dm and uh she will help you out and make sure you get the book yes please yes, yes. all right thank you thank you all so much all right bye all good right night. bye good night everyone good night sweetie hey. <laughs> All right, good night. <laughs>